of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Smuggling activities of that genius of evil, the octopus, have brought Speed Gibson, his uncle, Clint Barlow, and Barney Dunlap, all members of the International Secret Police, to Hong Kong, China, to end the criminal's career once and for all. The boys have been invited to dine with Dr. Kingsley on their first evening in Hong Kong. Clint has planned to ask the doctor what he knows of the neighborhood indicated on the map that Marsha Winfield's brother sent her. Another member of the party rouses his suspicion, however... Mr. Wu, a high caste Chinese who, in reality, is a member of the Octopus Band. Clint's uncanny intuition holds him silent before the man, and then, while they are all looking at a Chinese gong, a knife flies through the window and Clint, wounded, falls to the floor. We find Speed, Barney, and Mr. Wu anxiously watching as Dr. Kingsley finishes bandaging Clint. There you are, Barlow. How does that feel? Well, as well as any knife wound can feel after a good doctor is taking care of it, Dr. Kingsley. You were lucky. That knife was aimed for your heart. And would have found it if you hadn't shoved me aside. Sure would, Clint. It cuts in the arm just about at your heart level. And I can thank you for saving my life, Doctor. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. A life for a life. Master Gibson saved the life of the doctor's small daughter. The doctor saved the life of Mr. Barlow. In the eyes of the Chinese, the debt is paid. I'd give anything to know who did that. My servants are searching the ground. Don't think it'll do much good, Doc. That knife throwing axe smacks of the octopus, and you never find anybody who'd done anything when the smoke's cleared away. You were near that window when it happened, Barney. Didn't you see anything? Wouldn't I have yipped if I had? I was admiring the window itself, not looking through it. Ah, yes, the Chinese moon window. Large and round, so as to let as much of the moonlight in as possible. A charming legend is written about the moon window. If you'll pardon me, Mr. Wu, I'm more interested in the legend about this dragon knife than in that of the moon window right now. Oh, quite so. The dragon knife was once only the property of royalty. The old empress, Su Tsi, born Lan Kui, had several. Her favorite was made of pure gold studded with pink jade and diamonds. Well, the Boxer Rebellion did away with the old empress and her autocracy. Hmm, yes. But the dragon knives live on. They are only used on those of high standing. Oh, you take it as a compliment to be punctured with one of those sabers, huh? In a way, yes. It is an honorable death. Well, I don't see anything honorable about a knife being thrown from the dark. I think the octopus and his gang are nothing but a bunch of cowards. You're right, Speed. And if that knife had been poisoned, as they so often are, that scratch on the arm would have been the end of your uncle. It was almost the end of Miss Marcia. She just about fainted when she saw Clint go down. Yeah, it's too bad she and Jean had to see that. You did the right thing and sent them to Jean's room while you bandaged Clint up, Doc. Ah, uh, it's a bad business. I spoke to Miss Winfield about staying on as Jean's governess, but she said that she had business to attend to elsewhere. I don't like to see her going about China alone. Not with this octopus organization at work. Yes, it would be better if she stayed here with Jean for the time being. And what are you going to do, Mr. Barlow? Uh, do? In regard to this octopus? Mr. Wu, uh, I haven't the slightest idea. Hmm. I believe the hour is growing late. I had best be going. May I drive you and your friends to your hotel, Mr. Barlow? Uh, no, thank you. I've already arranged with the rickshaw boy to pick us up here, Mr. Wu. Very well. I shall look forward to our meeting again very soon. Well, um, I'll see you to the door, Mr. Wu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Doctor. What do you think, Clint? I know the octopus isn't wasting any time in trying to get me out of the way. Are you going to cable the chief? No. Not until we talk to our tea merchant tomorrow morning. By the way, why did you tell Wu we had a rickshaw boy calling for us? That's not true because we didn't know when we'd leave. I told Mr. Wu that because, first, I didn't want him to know at what hotel we were staying. Second... I wanted some time alone with the doctor. And third, we're not going to the hotel tonight. We're going to stay right here. Here? That don't make sense. Mm, more sense than you can get through your thick head, old pal. 
I've got a hunch that whoever threw that dragon knife is waiting somewhere along the Langsu Road with some other assassins. Suffering wing doodles. She will. Exactly. And now, as soon as the doctor returns, I'm going to show him our map and see if he recognizes any of the streets marked. The octopus isn't wasting any time. Neither will we. Yes, master. What is your report? I have just come from the home of Dr. Kingsley. The dragon knife failed. Ah, must I do such work myself? Can I not trust my operators anymore? Has this Clint Barlow cast a spell upon them? It was purely fate, master. Had the doctor not seen the knife and pushed Barlow aside under the floor, your plan would have succeeded. The doctor? Hmm. What of the knife thrower? He and four others are waiting Barlow and the other two in the shadows of Lang Su Road. I asked Barlow if I might drive them to the hotel, but he refused, saying that their rickshaw boy was calling later. They will not get past our men. And uh, the Winfield girl? The doctor wanted her to stay on at his home as governess for the child, but she has refused. She said she had business elsewhere. I will not tolerate her interference. I know what men will do, but women, never. She must be removed. Yes, master. But I shall attend to her later. Just now, since you have brought me so much information, Kwan Wu, I shall retaliate. The octopus should tell you some things you do not appear to know. I listen, master. I have information that Clint Barlow, Speed Gibson, and Barney Dunlap are not staying at Fowler House as you thought. No, but they led me to think that they would. May I remind you, Wu, that you are not dealing with ordinary detectives. The International Secret Police do not take kindly to suggestions from strangers. I begin to understand. They are staying at the Golden Lotus. The Golden Lotus? I have sent operators to the hotel to await their coming. But this does not satisfy me. I know Clint Barlow too well to think that he is missing anything that is going on. What do you mean, Master? As you know, that shipment of slaves from Hong Chao... Is coming down the Siang River tomorrow night. I want nothing to interfere with their transfer to the freighter here at Hong Kong. Nothing will, Master. They are coming on a flower boat. No one will dream, seeing dancing girls and blossoms above, that slaves are below the deck. Perhaps. But I will make sure that no one will dream anything. Not only will my men go to the Golden Lotus tonight, but await the coming of the secret police. But I am sending some to Dr. Kingsley's home. Just in case Barlow decides to spend the night there. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, gee, I've looked so long at that map that I don't know if it's a map of Hong Kong or New York. Well, I think we've done about all we can on it, Mr. Barlow. The street names that I've listed for you are mostly guesswork, but then, of course, sometimes a guess turns out to be right. Uh, yes, I appreciate your help, Doctor, and I must ask you to keep silent about what we've just discussed. Well, of course. How's your arm? Oh, it aches a bit, but that's only natural. It won't keep you awake, will it, Clint? I should say not. We've had a big day today. Nothing short of the house falling down could wake me up. Uh, don't say that too loud. You might give the octopus ideas. <laughs> well, I, I believe you're as safe here as you would be any place. The octopus couldn't possibly know that you've decided to spend the night here. Well, we're very grateful to you for allowing us to stay, Doctor. Well, on the other hand, it is I who am grateful. Your presence guarantees the safety of my daughter, Miss Winfield. Oh, oh, well, let's put that map away and get some shut-eye, huh? I'm out on my feet. Me too. You want this map of the city, too, Barney? Yeah, if I can have it, Doc. By all means. I'll uh, show you to your rooms now. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way, Doctor, have you any sort of protection around this house? Uh, burglar alarms or something similar? No, I haven't, Barlow. I never felt any need for them. Just me and the servants here. Yeah, but now your daughter is here, too. Yeah, Doc, so long as this octopus guy's around, I wouldn't take any chances. Good heavens, do you think... Doctor, that... you're an important man in Hong Kong. You may actually see and speak with the octopus every day. You may be in his way, since you're honest. Has he ever sought to contact you? No. But he may be watching your every move. His eyes are those of his spies. 
If he should ever want you to shut your eyes to something crooked or want you to do something for him, he may force you to bow to his will through your daughter. Well, he wouldn't dare. I'm in the diplomatic service. I have full protection from the government and the added protection of being an American citizen. The octopus recognizes no boundaries, Dr. Kingsley. The world is his chessboard, and those who stand in his way are pawns and kings to be moved as he wishes. Yeah, but his game is a lot rougher than chess. Hey, where are you going, Speed? Just over here to the moon window, Barty. I want to take another look at it. Oh, oh, look at it tomorrow, kid. Let's go to bed now. If I stay up much longer, I'll fall asleep right here. Okay, just a second. Your arm isn't bothering you any, Clint, is it? Oh, no. Feels great, Doctor. <laughs> Clint and me look like we're fresh out of the hospital. Him with his arm bandaged and me with a black eye. If I hadn't had my credential papers in order, they never would have let me land at any of the ports. Said I looked like a desperate character. Morning. <laughs> 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 what is it, Speed? There's someone prowling around in the garden. I could just make out three guys, and I think they're more. Someone in the garden? Would they be your servants, Doc? Why, no. They were in the garden searching for Clint's assailant. But uh, they came in some time ago. You didn't let on you'd seen anything, did you, Speed? No. I pretended to be looking at the window itself and not out in the garden. Good boy. Now, Doctor, let us act as we normally would under the circumstances. Keep on laughing and talking. Switch off the lights as if you were about to show us to our rooms. We must pretend that we don't know we're being watched. But why? Who can that be in the garden? The octopus gang. Doctor, your house is surrounded. (laughs) 